Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignandTechTips.com. Well, we've got this great highlighted card carousel for you today. It's automated so it rolls along on its own and when we click on it, it's got a nice light box effect to pop out the images for you. Now we're using the premium plugin Wow Carousel for this today from Divi People. Wow Carousel is amazing and will let you make a carousel just about out of anything. You can make it out of products, you can make it out of posts, you can make it out of mixed content and we've done videos on those before. So let's show you how to do this. It's really easy. Now I'll put the link for Wow Carousel down below. Okay well I'm going to enable the Visual Builder and once enabled I'm going to go down I'm going to completely trash this section. Okay, well let's add a new section. I'll make it a regular section. I'm going to put a single column, a single row in there. And before I actually put anything in there, I'm just going to drag it up to the top. Blue tab for a section, green for a row. I'm going to grab it with a little handle there. I'm going to just drop it up the top here. Let's add our module, a little dark tab to add our module. Divi comes as standard with all the light gray ones, plenty enough to build just about any site. When you add the WoW Carousel module, you get all these blue ones here, and there's card carousels, content carousels, Google review carousels, image carousels, Instagram feed carousels, smart sliders, testimonial carousels, Twitter feeds, all kind of things to build all kind of sliders for you, and they're awesome. I'm gonna use a WoW Carousel card today. And the first thing it's going to do is prompt us to add a new item. You can use an icon if you want. I'm going to go ahead and use an image. Let's pop an image in there. As you can see, there's an image. There's image alt text below. Alt text should be used for a description of whatever the image in. It's really for sight impaired viewers that use screen readers and it'll actually read out to them what the image is. A lot of people use it for SEO, putting geolocation data and keywords in there. Not sure how effective that is nowadays, but that's an option if you want to use it. Okay, you can choose to hide a badge if you want to. At the moment it's hidden. If I turn it off, there's a little badge we can put on there. I'm not going to use that today, but I will put a title in. Let's put special of the day or something whatever you want to put in and I'm just going to use a bit of dummy text Laura Mipsum to put in our description right here and it will let you put dynamic content as well with this little icon right here if you wanted to add a page excerpt or a publishing date page link or a bio site title site tagline or the current date there if you wanted to special of the day but I'm happy with it just to have my content in there you can use a button if you want to if I just switch that on there's a button and you can style that over in the design however you want I'm not going to use a button on this this is purely decorative and if I turn that back on put your button text in there whatever you want your button to say click here at the moment put your button URL link down below wherever you want to take your visitors Best practice as usual, if you're linking to your own site, don't open it in a new window, so turn that off. If you're linking off site, open it in a new window so your site stays open. But I don't want to use a button, so I'm going to turn that back off. Okay, tab content. Now tabs, I'll show you what they are in a minute. What I'm going to do, let's go back up to our content and special of the day let's put a capital D on there for a start I'm going to copy this and we'll go down to our tab content and we'll put that in the title and for a subtitle let's give it a price perhaps of $9.99 whatever you want to do and you can add a thumbnail also I'll add the same image we're not actually going to use these today but I will show you what they do for demonstration purposes okay and actually I may as well put a price on that title while we're in here let's just copy that price into the content there's our title 
put that price in there as well. That's better. Great. Okay. So if you want to, you can put a link. Again, I don't need to do that. And it's the same best practice for linking. If you want to give it a background color, go ahead here. You've got a color, gradient, image, or video. I'm going to go ahead and put a color in the background there. There we go. Moving on to the design tab in the general content alignment. I'm going to put mine in the middle. As you can see, all the writings in the middle there. I'm going to put some padding around it. So it's got a bit of space. I don't know if you can see that it's really dark. We'll change the color of that in a minute so you can see it better. But I want to give it some space all around. So I'm going to give it, say, 20 picks all around. Just put in the 20. It'll put in the picks for you. Hit the chain. It'll do the opposite side. Same for left and right. That just gives it a bit more breathing room there. If you want to give your card rounded corners, you can do so here. Small value, like five picks, will just give it slightly rounded corners like that. Large value, like 25 picks, obviously will give it more prominent corners. Let's just leave it on that. I'm not going to add a border, but if you want to, you can do so here. You can do them all at once, top, right, bottom, or left separately if you want to. And then just set the width that you want and the color you want. And as with all Divi modules, there's a drop down color palette below to choose more colors from. Okay. Image and icon. Well, you can style your image and icon how you wish. And you can actually place the image where you want to. At the moment, it's on the top. You can put it on the left or on the right. And you can decide how tall it's going to be. And you can decide the width. And common to most Divi modules, if you do something and you don't like what you've done, simply go in there, select it, delete it. It'll return to the default for you. I'm going to put mine back on the top there. There we go. You can have a hover animation if you want to. Zoom in, zoom out. Let's have a look at the zoom in. That's quite nice. Let's leave it on that. And you can round off the corners of your image if you want to and give it a separate border if you want to. For instance, we could give this a white border on the bottom if we wanted to. I've just selected the bottom there. Say two picks. White. And you've got a little border there. I'm going to take that away. Just demoing it for you. Take it away. Just take it back down to zero. It'll disappear. OK. Overlay. If you want a colored overlay on your image as well, you can put one in here. You can have a color or a gradient. I'm not particularly bothered about having one, but let's put one in just to show you what it does. And let's put a purple overlay in there. What you want to do is click on the color, bring the transparency down. So it's the color you want. Now, I don't really need that for mine today, but if you've got a badge or something that you need to highlight, that's a great thing to have in there. So let's just set that back to transparent. And you can have an icon in there also if you want to have an overlay icon. As you see, let's pop that in there. We can put that there. Now, if you had an icon, it would be a good idea to have an overlay. But again, I really don't need an icon. So I'm going to take that one away. OK, let's move on down. You can change the icon size and the opacity of it down below. Opacity is transparency or see-throughness. We're not using a badge today, but if you were, you could style it right here, decide where you want it, and give it the amount of padding that you want. And you've got offsets for X and Y, so you can pretty much have it anywhere around here that you want your badge. And again, you've got rounded corners and borders and things like that. Now here's our text. I want to change both the title and the description. So we've not got a badge, so I'm going to go into the title. Divi is standard comes with a crazy amount of fonts. It really does. And if you just hover over one, it'll show you an example of it. I'm happy to leave mine on the default. I'm going to make it a bit heavier, so I'm going to make it semi-bold. I'm going to make it light in color or white, perhaps, so we can see it a bit better. Text alignment's fine. Let's go back up, and we'll do similar for the description. What I'm going to do for this is make it light in color so we can see it a bit better. There we go. That's a lot better. And of course, you can change the font, the size, the letter spacing, line height, anything you need to do there. 
We're not using a button, but how do you use the button? This is where you could give it custom styling. Just flip that on. And you can give it whatever background and font you want for that one too. And there's plenty of options there. But we're not using one, so we don't need to do that today. Let's go back up to the top. Now the only other thing I'd like to do is have this open in a light box. To do that, let's save our little card that we've got here and that will take us back to the main carousel module. There's our card, there's our main carousel module. We've got carousel settings down underneath. And you can set your autoplay and animation. We'll go through this when we've got a few more slides in there. But if we go over to the advanced carousel settings, advanced, slide down. We've got all kind of options here, lazy loading and progressive and auto height, swipe for tablets and things like that. But what I want is open image in Lightbox. So now that image, when we click on it, will open in a Lightbox. Okay, well we've got one. What I really want to do now is duplicate this several times. So all I'm going to do is hit the two squares to duplicate. I'm going to duplicate it five or six times. I'm going to go in and change the title and the image on all of those. So I'll pause this while I do that. There's no point you watching me do that. As you can see, it started to automate already. Okay, I've just finished the last one there. And as you can see, I've changed images and prices and titles up there. So let's go down into our carousel settings below and I'll show you the options here. And there's some fantastic options. I'm on the general tab. So let's hit the tab settings and I'm going to flip the use tab to on and watch what happens. It's put it into a single carousel and we've got our little tabs underneath displaying the various different other slides at a different speed. Which is a pretty cool effect and you can select whether to display the title subtitle or thumbnail as well if i click that on you've got the little thumbnail of that in there also and you can show the amount of tab items here so up it to four uh, let's just turn the thumbnail back off and as you can see we've got four in there now and of course you can style these tab options, background, text and everything in the design. But I'm not going to use those. I just wanted to demonstrate that to you. So I'm going to turn that back off. Okay. Well, let's go back to our carousel settings and look at the advanced now. Now sliding is fine with ease in and ease out. Let's just roll this up a bit so we can see it. Lazy loading is great for loading, so it doesn't load the images until they're needed. Progressive is fine. You can do auto height. Mine are all the same height at the moment, so I don't need that. Swipe's a great idea for a tablet. Number of items to scroll. It's scrolling one at a time at the moment, which is fine. Now it's got some great options here. You can flip it to vertical mode. And it'll just roll up instead of rolling across. And that's a nice little feature, but it's not what I want today. And we've got a center mode. If I put this on, just make sure there's one in the center all the time. And again, I've got an even number, so it sort of cuts one off. But the great thing about center mode is you've got a classic and you've got a highlighted. I like the highlighted. So what it does, it makes the one in the middle bigger. And that really works for me. I like that a lot. So I'm going to leave it on that. You can use a custom cursor. At the moment we've got a, a little cross thing there. If you want to use a custom cursor, turn that one on. And choose what type of cursor you want there. I'm happy to have mine as it is. I'm not going to try change the wrapper spacing, top or bottom. I do want to open the image in the light box, so I'm going to leave that one on. We turned that one on earlier. And I don't need to equalize item heights because mine are all the same height pretty much anyway. Now down below you've got the tab settings that we looked at earlier, so we're good to go on that. 
So we're pretty good to go on this. It's doing pretty much everything I want it to do. If we go back into our carousel settings, the actual speed, animation speed, the time it takes for one to get from here to here is 700 milliseconds, which is fine. I might slow it down a bit to a second. And autoplay speed for this, it's doing it every two seconds. Let's up that to three seconds or 3000 milliseconds. Now you can have navigation, arrows and pagination, which are little dots that appear down there. Just choose what you want down here. None, navigation, pagination or both. I'm happy to just have the little arrows. That works for me. Don't need a fixed width slide. They're all working well for me at the moment. Number of slides to show three. I'm happy with that too. Slide spacing. If you want them up against each other, take it all the way down. But again, I'm happy with the default, which is 10. You can apply spacing on first and last item if you're stuck for space. And I do want it to infinitely loop, go round and round and round. So popping over to design, really the only thing that I want to style now is perhaps these navigation arrows, everything else is working fine. But before I do that, I'm just going to put a background gradient in my section to make this stand out a bit more. Blue tab for the section. Here's the background. I'm going to choose a gradient. And let's make top purple. Make the bottom black. There we go, that's great. Now let's just style these little arrows. Sign, navigation. And you've got various different styles to choose. You've got alongside, we've got default. Icon color, I'm going to make mine white. See, there's little arrows change to white. I really don't want a background on them, so I'm going to take the background away, just make it transparent. There we go. I might up those in size a little bit, just make them a little bit bigger. Perfect. That works perfectly for me. And that's pretty much all I wanted to do. If you had pagination, you do it here. And you can style your tabs here. Again, we're not using the tab, so I'm happy with that. So I think we're good to go. Let's save our changes. Let's exit the visual builder. Save draft or publish if you're ready. Let's see what we've got on the front end. There it is. There's our little card carousel. When we hover over it, it's going to pause. Got that little zoom effect. When I actually left click on an image, it's going to pop out into a light box. Fantastic. When I take my mouse off, it's going to continue again. And we've got arrows. Go that way or this way. And this is just one of the many, many carousels you can create with WoW Carousel. It really is great for all kind of carousels, especially if you're using WooCommerce and you've got products and things. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.